so now recording is on very good evening friends today the first session on this uh, uh, limited insolvency examination aspirants so let me share my screen first so this is the se uh, session uh, screen today's session So those who cannot attend or those who can partly attend or those who are traveling or, and are not able to listen properly. So I will be sharing the video recording also with all of you. And that video recording will always be available with you. And whatever PPTs we are presenting here, they will all be available. And these all PPTs are in editable mode. So you can edit them as well. So to start with the, uh, this, uh, Basic overview, as you know, in IBC, there are five parts. So part one, part two, part three, part four, and part five. Oh, sorry, Gupta ji, yeah, can you yes, put please. a presentation mode, please? Aapka, oh, slide mode, mein hai. presentation mode. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, yeah, pura screen ah, okay. ah, now it's better, I think. Ah. Yes, yes. Ah, yes. Thank, thank you. you. So uh, part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, and then? 12 schedules. So there are some definitions which are given in respective parts and they apply to that part only. But the definitions which are given in part 1, which is preliminary, they apply to the whole of the code. Suppose a definition is given in part 2, then it will apply to part 2 only. Suppose a definition is given in part 3, it will apply to part 3 only. But the definitions which are contained in part 1, they apply to the whole of the code. Now, let us briefly have an overview of this IBC, what it, IBC is all about. Basically, the framework, the existing framework for this IBC, it was considered inadequate, ineffective, and it was thought that it is resulting in undue delays. So various committees and commissions were there. And the most important committee and the most relevant committee for IBC is Bankruptcy Law Reforms Committee, briefly called BLRC. So in November 2015, this BLRC recommended the IBC code and it was introduced in Parliament in December 2015. And the objective of the code is to consolidate and amend the laws relating to insolvency acts and amend several other acts. So what is the aim of the code? This code so first this question, why this code not an act? It is a code because it is an all encompassing, it encompasses the act, rules, regulations, all in one place. Sometimes like we have got companies, act, but then it is supplemented with rules. But here, everything is covered in the code itself. And the code amends at, uh, aims at promoting investments as well as a resolution of insolvency of corporate firm, persons, firms, and individuals in a time-bound manner. So this, the time-bound mechanism is one of the important features of this IBC. And it aims at promoting investments as well as a resolution of insolvency. Because insolvency, you know, is a state when a person is unable to pay the debts. And whenever, whenever I say a person, person includes a company's HUF, partnership of everything. It provides for designating the LCLT and DRT as the adjudicating authority. So here, the concept of court is not there. So there is a concept of adjudicating authorities. And the adjudicating authority for these corporate persons is NCLT. And for individuals and partnership firms, it is DRT, debt recovery tribunal. Another important and notable feature of this IBC is that it separates the commercial aspects of insolvency and bankruptcy proceedings from judicial aspects. So as we all know, this code aims at resolution of insolvency of businesses. So whether that business is being run as a company or as a firm or as an individual. And there are two aspects to this. One aspect is the commercial aspect. And the second aspect is the legal aspect or judicial aspect. So it says that for commercial aspects, let uh, the adjudicating authority be kept aloof from that commercial aspect and let that commercial aspect be taken over by a, be taken care by a committee of 
creditors, which will mainly be from the financial creditors. So financial creditors are the persons who have given loan or financial assistance to the company or to the individual. So it aims at separation, commercial aspects and judicial aspects. But if we see at the earlier laws, like Companies Act, there were provisions for winding up in Companies Act also. But there, both the aspects, commercial aspects as well as judicial aspects were taken care by the courts only. And then it also provides for establishment of insolvency professional agencies and information utilities.